Good evening. At this time, I would like to call the meeting to order. Could we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Backus, could you please call the roll? Chair Shirley Teller Hayes. Present. Vice Chair Connie Newhan. Present. Trustee Jamie Merchant. Present. Trustee Aisha Kennerly. Present. And Trustee Meg Iamato. Present. At this time, we'd like to go um, look at the meeting minutes for. Let's see, it was May 24th, 2022. Do we have a motion or does anyone have any corrections or? Do we have a motion? Is there? I'll make a motion. I will second to approve the minutes. A motion was made by Trustee Merchant and seconded by Trustee. <laughs> 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 How'd I forget it? New hand. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we take a vote? Yes. Ms. Beck. I think we have to do a... Um, Chair Shirley Teller Hayes. I wasn't present, so I abstain. Vice Chair Connie Newhan. Aye. Trustee Meg Amato. Aye. Trustee Aisha Kennerly. Aye. Trustee Jamie Merchant. Aye. Do I go here on the... The motion passes and the minutes are approved. Communications from the public. This portion of the agenda is intended for public comment only on items within the trustees in jurisdiction that are listed or not listed on the agenda. Persons wishing to address the Library Board of Trustees are requested to identify themselves and state the matter on which they wish to comment. No action will be taken on matters not listed on the agenda. Please observe a three minute limit for communications. Ms. Backus, are there any written comments from the public? No written comments. Thank you. Ms. Backus, are there any speaker cards for public comment? No speaker cards. We'll move on to the next portion, uh, the youth update. Um, a presentation by the Teen Advisory Council. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm Vesper. I am the acting president of the Teen Advisory Council. This is Shivani, our vice president, and Lucas, one of our members. Um, so just to come back at you with some old news, we just had our diversity in action event, DIA, this year, that was on April 30th. We had 234 people show up to this event. It was a beautiful event. We had um, poster boards and crafts from different countries, such as Vietnam, Italy, Mexico, South Korea, and India. We also had two different dance performances. We had ballet florocorico and also Irish dancers. So it was an awesome time and we did an opportunity drawing for um, some different books, who, what, who Wore What When, sorry, it's a mouthful, which was um, our book that we had and then also a children's cultural coloring book. So there was different categories that you can enter for. So that was a very fun time. Um, and thank you to you guys for helping to sponsor this event. It's something that we look forward to partnering with you guys every year. It's been one of the biggest events that we always have, and we just very much appreciate everything that you guys do for us. So a little bit more recent news, just on the Teen Advisory Council as a whole, whole, we are moving our meetings from the second and fourth Mondays to the second and fourth Thursdays of the month. So we'll be meeting on Thursdays from now on. We also just got our full-time coordinator, Ms. Parker and our part-time coordinator, Mr. Tran. So we're very excited to start working with them and we're gonna have just an absolute blast this year. 
So then coming up, we have our murder mystery event. This will be on Thursday, July 28th from 5 to 7 p.m. This is for our teen audience. So we're doing a murder in the hive. So you can come and enjoy some nice Jimmy John's with us. And we're going to be doing a murder mystery show. And this year is murder in the hive. So it will be bee themed and we will be giving out bee themed prizes for all of our participants. So we look forward to seeing people there. And that is all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vesper. Um, is there a representative here for the Mayor's Youth Council? No, there is not. Thank you. Ms. Backus, are there any written comments from the public? No written comments from the public. And are there any public speaker cards? No speaker cards. Trustees, any comments? No, I just, I'm so happy to hear that the DIA was a success. I knew you always, I think everything you, your team does is a success, and um, I'm anxious to see about murder mystery night. I know that's a big one, and um, we're just happy to have you here tonight. We've missed you guys. We've missed you too. It's Aww. nice to be back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Item number two, discussion items, um, the assistant director's report. Good evening, trustees. Good evening. It's nice and cool in here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so I will go over a few things that are happening right now. So we, uh, Vesper mentioned that we have some new staff. We have had some full-time vacancies since way back in December, and we have two library specialists that have started this week. It's so recent that we did not have pictures yet to put in the, <laughs> in, the uh, in our presentation tonight. But as Vesper mentioned, Samantha Parker, she was one of our part-time staff for a while and was promoted to a library specialist. She's going to be overseeing uh, services and programs related to our special groups, such as teens and our Vets Connect and our Adaptive. She's also going to be the full-time lead on the Maker Exchange. And uh, Shandara Khan is going to be taking over and rebuilding our literacy services. Those really fell during 2020. That group was very hard to reach at that time because we couldn't see them in person. And uh, Danny is here to speak a little bit more about what's going on in that part of our library services. So you'll hear some more about that. We're very excited to have these two super creative, just we're really excited to have them on the team. And I wanted to point out, we have, it's been really interesting looking at the statistics as we, has come, as, we, as we have made our way out of the pandemic. Now, 2021, about a year after everything started, it, it, things were still a little slow to get going. So if you look at the stats this month and probably all through the year, there's huge leaps because of how low attendance was at different things in 2021. So you see our patron visits are getting a little closer to pre-pandemic for each month, up 224%. I think our revenue and passports went up like 20,000% or something crazy like that. Um, borrowers registered doubled. Our total circulation is on the rise and our public computer usage up 718%. Part of that, during the pandemic, we had far fewer workstations out for the public to allow for the spacing. They were also ancient and didn't work so well. And we partnered with our IT department and they put in a service level change for this current fiscal year to replace all of them. So it's all new workstations for the public, the most current software. It's, it's wonderful to have this resource for them and you can see they're using it. A reminder that we have summer reading going on, and so far in the first month, over 1,000 have registered. So please let people know you can register up to the end of July. So there's still a whole month to register and get your minutes in and uh, get prizes and, um, yeah, be rewarded for something you like to do anyway. We doubled our summer story times during 
the summer. We usually have two a week. We doubled it to four and we are getting a really good response. So you can see it has near 200 in a single attendance at times. It varies a little bit. We're not sure what folks are doing at different times of the week, but it is getting a really nice response. And uh, additionally, our community services on the go is meeting people at our splash pads. That is where people are congregating is where the water is. So we're meeting them there and engaging with them. And super awesome news, we, this is another partnership with our IT department, we received a $250,000 grant to upgrade our hardware that supports our broadband. We also receive a grant to support the broadband, but the infrastructure for it was not allowing us to use it to our full capacity. So we, the infrastructure was behind, quite behind, to the point where they said, oh, you're using what? Okay, you get the money. And so that will start going to place. We have to do some bids on some of the work, but that is really gonna be a benefit to our library users. If you've ever been in the lower level of the library, you know it's a little hit and miss down there. Those problems should all be gone. It will also reach out into the parking lot. So that could be super beneficial for people too. And just all the things that continue on in July, night market continues, we've had two of those so far. Boy, it was a blustery hot one on Monday. <laughs> so bless those people that came out to support that. Summer concerts start in uh, two weeks. Of course, our 4th of July celebration is on Monday. Hard to believe that's here already. And uh, at least it'll be a little cooler by Monday is what it looks like. And then of course, as I mentioned, Read Beyond the Beaten Path continues until um, July 30th. You can still register and then we'll be giving prizes through the first couple of weeks of August. And that's all I have unless you have any questions. Thank you. This place is really hopping, huh? <laughs> Just I have a question sure. on the um, computer upgrades. Did the uh, request from Vets Connect fall into that? That's a separate. That This particular set of updates was actually for the current fiscal year, fiscal year 22. It took a long time to get in place because of all the supply chain issues. It took a while. That will be part of the approaching Next fiscal year. year, correct. Okay. Do you have any idea how long it'll take? I'm not sure, but you know what? I can, I can find out what we anticipate. If the ordering is faster, if, the, if that supply chain is better, hopefully it will be pretty quickly into the new fiscal year. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. They're getting a printer and a computer? That's correct. Ms. Backus, are there any written comments from the public? No written comments from the public. And are there any speaker cards? For no speaker comment? cards. Thank you. Any other comments from the trustees? Item number three, um, the report, the trustee statements on intellectual freedom. Good evening, trustees. Ann Turner, Director of Community Services. Welcome tonight. Um, so we are asking the trustees to consider uh, the statement of support for intellectual freedom. Um, we had discussed this at previous meetings. Um, we think in the current climate, this is an important uh, piece of advocacy for the trustees to do. And so um, the statement of support of intellectual freedom reads, the City of Corona Library Trustees assert the right of every library user to read and seek information and speak freely as guaranteed by the First Amendment. The Library Board of Trustees affirms the American Libraries Association Library Bill of Rights, freedom to view, freedom to read, policy statements in support of acquiring and managing collections. The books and other library resources are provided for the interest, information, and enlightenment of all people in the community the library serves. Materials are not to be excluded because of origin, background, or views of those contributing to their creation. Libraries provide materials and information presenting all points of view on current and historic issues. Materials are not to be proscribed or removed because of partisan or doctor, 
doctrinal disapproval. Library challenge censorship in fulfillment of the library challenges censorship in the fulfillment of their responsibility to provide information and enlightenment. Libraries cooperate with all persons and groups concerned with resisting the abridgment of free expression and free access to ideas. A person's right to use the library will not be denied or abridged because of origin, age, background, or views. The Corona Library trustees are committed to inclusive, equitable, and easy access to resources and books. We ask tonight that the library trustees consider this statement and sign this statement and authorize the chair of the library trustees to sign this statement on behalf of the board of trustees and that that statement be filed with the state library association. Thank you. Ms. Backus. Are oh, I think, I think there's a question. Oh, you have a question first, okay. I have a question because it says um, the Library Board of Trustees affirms the American Library Association's Library Bill of Rights, Freedom to View, and Freedom to Read policy statements. Mm -hmm. Do we have those? We can provide those to you. So those are on the web, um, but we can provide those to you. Uh, this, it is basically we took basically that Bill of Rights and, and those, those concepts and put this into your letter of support. Um, this is pretty much a mirror of what the state library system has put out there for trustees. We're deeply concerned, particularly as this budget um, has approved Collection HQ and the commitment of this trustee board and the direction that you've provided to staff was that you wanted to make sure that we were examining our collection and making sure that our collection served all members inclusively of the Corona community. Um, we want to make sure, um, as we've had visitors from other trustee groups in other cities looking at our library and looking at our collection and removing books from their own city's collection, we want to make sure that, that any visitor to our library is clear that our library board of trustees affirms open and inclusive access to all materials to all residents. Um, and we'd like to also post this letter of affirmation and support at the library. I, I believe they're all in the, our handbook. Oh, there's there's a, the whole section on, on the Bill of Rights and Right to Read. So, But thank you for putting this together. Um, as I had tried to discuss it, but it was difficult under our restrictions you know, to get everybody on the same page. And I appreciate your doing it for us, basically, and I can't wait to sign it. I just have a question, and this is gonna be the answer, is just gonna be more informational for the public that's watching. Um, when you hear the term banned books, and that is occurring at a local level, correct? It is, it's occurring at all levels. Um, we are finding that there are greater and greater restrictions on um, words, um, for lack of a better way of putting it. I mean, down to the smallest sort of denominator. There are words in which that folks are trying to have ban or not show up in print um, or not be available on electronics. And um, we have communities within 10 miles of us um, that are um, rejecting books from their library because they include words that they have deemed to be not okay. And, and, and so we wanna make sure that when anyone from any community comes to the Corona Library that they understand the intent of this, this board of trustees and this community to be inclusive and equitable and to have books that are available for anybody who is interested in reading. Ms. Backus, are there any written comments from the public? No written comments from the public. And are there any speaker cards from the public? No speaker cards. Um, so we are going to take a vote or are we going to review and? You're gonna take a vote tonight. Um, you're gonna to take a vote uh, in support of this. And then the a procedural question that I would have you also um, discuss and give staff direction on is whether or not you just want the chair to sign on behalf of all the board of trustees or if each member of the board would like their name um, assigned to this, to this affirmation and it will be posted at the Corona Library. 
Thank you. So at this point, we are, is there a motion to approve the Intellectual Freedom, is it called the International Freedom? Statement. statement. Support of Intellectual Freedom statement. statement. So at this time, is there a motion? Also move. And is there a second? I second. Motion was brought forward by Trustee Connie Newham and second by Alicia. <laughs> Um, can we take a uh, vote? Ms. Backus. Chair Shirley Teller Hayes. Approve. Vice Chair Connie Newham. Approve. Trustee Meg Imato. Approve. Trustee Jamie Merchant. Approve. And Trustee Aisha Kennerly. Approve. And the motion passes. And are we signing as? So you, so I guess it would be, we could just take a verbal roll call if, if trustees would like to sign it individually, um, or if you would like it signed just by the chair. So that, that's a discussion item for you, um, whatever you choose, yes. I I would like to sign the, the, the whole trustees group to show that we are all in support of it. Um, I just, maybe it's a stronger statement than one signature, I don't know. Um, also, I'd like to ask, could you email us this draft, please? Or is it in here? It was in your packet. It. it should be in your packet. If it's not there, I will email it to you. Okay. <clears throat> So it looks as though. I don't see it. Okay. We'll, I'll, I'll an approval that everyone will sign. Okay. Sorry, we will prepare it for your signature, and um, and we will we will let you know. Um, Ms. Backus will contact you, and when you can come into the library and sign the draft that we'll be posting, um, and we will we will both register it on our permanent record of this meeting, but we will also have it posted for public display at the library. And we'll, oh, we'll also send it into the State Library. Okay. Thank you. It doesn't have to be approved by council then, right? No, this is a statement from the trustees. Okay. Uh, Dr. Turner, is this something that we would bring before city council at an open, at a meeting, or somehow so that city council knows we've adopted this, another way to get the word out? You're, you're always welcome to, to share it with the council during public comment. Obviously, we encourage you know the, the correspondence between the, the council and the trustees. They will know. Um, obviously, this is a recorded meeting, and we will inform the council um, as we do a, with a summary of action from your meeting, so they'll, they will know that. Um, if you would like to make the statement during public comment, I think that's, that's great as well, and obviously, for all of those Council members who come and enjoy the library, they will get to see it also posted at the library. Thank you. Item number four is oh, library circulation and patron accounts policy and the library collection development and management policy. And are we doing four and five at the same time? We're doing these two. So what is happening is we have well I'll I'll talk about it as we talk about as we talk through this but I've divided the the policies up into separate parts there's not major changes but this is to let you know that uh, some changes these general changes are being made so we have currently a set of library operation policies that are in one big document and they're a little difficult to use and navigate. Sometimes, as Dr. Turner mentioned, sometimes someone from the community would like to see our policies or has a question about something, and we want to be able to quickly produce that. Also, staff sometimes need to refer to these documents for various reasons, because there are policies. And so we want to be able to reach those um, easily. 
And so the most recent revision was 2021, and that had to do with an emergency code of conduct related to uh, COVID, but they were originally issued in 1999. So uh, they've been around a little while. And that library operation policy number there, 06200.001, is what will be superseded with the policies you'll see tonight, and then we'll look at the rest of them in July. Um, like I said, there's not major changes. It's really dividing them up into easier uh, sizes. So why update now? One, we're part of a new department. We're community services now, not library and recreation services. So we need to reflect that in the policies. The restructure of you all uh, as the Library Board of Trustees. And then, as I mentioned, ease of access for staff and community. And I put each of our little divisions down there just to remind you how big the department is. <laughs> so what you're looking at tonight is the circulation and patron account policy and the collection development and management policy. In July, you will see the library code of conduct and suspension policy and the library study room use policy and lost and found policy. As I mentioned, there were very little changes made. I'm gonna show you what they were. So first of all, this is now an administrative policy with the restructure of the trustees. You will recommend changes or approve changes to be recommended to the city manager. So they are in a template where once you've recommended these and reviewed it, then um, Dr. Turner will sign it and the city manager will sign it to make it official. The department name is updated throughout, so community services department was put in there where needed. A title update was made. There was still from when we were just the library, even before library and recreation services, we never changed the policy. And it was referring to a title that does not exist now, which is library director. So wherever it says library director, we put community services director or designee. So who's ever in my position is that designee. And then we coordinate on you know any decision making that needs to happen. We added some definitions of terms to the policies. That's also part of that administrative policy template. And then the one policy was reorganized into four different ones. Now, if you've had an opportunity to look at those, are there any questions about any of the policies? Meg. So I just want to make sure that I'm understanding that, and I looked through them, there's no substantive policy change. It's just reformulating it and making it current. That's, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Any other questions? That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Do we have to move to like accept the policy? Right, correct. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve the updates to the um, library circulation and patron accounts policy and the library collection development and management policies? And I didn't include the numbers. Do I need to include no. the numbers? So moved. I second. The motion was made by Meg D'Amato and second by Jamie Merchant. My, mem my mind is gone tonight. <laughs> can, we, can we take a vote, Ms. Backus? Chair Shirley Teller Hayes. Approve. Vice Chair Connie Newhan. Approve. Trustee Maggie Amato. Approve. Aisha Kennerly, Trustee. Approve. And Jamie Merchant, trustee. Approved. The motion was unanimously approved. So was item 22-0600 uh, future agenda item suggestions, was that discussed? Not yet, but we also have uh, Danny's presentation. Okay. Welcome, Danny. Good evening, trustees. Uh, as you know, I'm Danny Perez Granado. I am a library supervisor. I oversee programming services and special events at the Corona Public Library. 
The unit I oversee recently had a name change to more aptly describe the work we do. So today, I am here to share an overview of the Literacy and Community Engagement Unit, or what we refer to as LCE. We are a team of 13, including myself. The team includes four full-time library specialists, five part-time library assistants, one part-time community services leader, one part-time literacy assistant, and one part-time summer intern. Please note that we are not fully dedicated to the programs and services we run. The assistants, specialists, and myself average about 40% of our time serving on the children's and adult reference desk. This calculates to a full-time equivalency of five staff. Our responsibilities include programming for all ages, uh, for all ages events, establishing and maintaining community and volunteer partnerships, and designing and implementing specialized services for diverse audiences, all of which I'll briefly introduce you to. But before we get into our services and programming introductions, I'd like to introduce the LCE unit. We are thrilled, as Abby mentioned, to be fully staffed as of yesterday. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Our newest hire is specialist Shandara Kun, and he is the lead for our adult literacy services. April Raya, she is a library specialist and she is leading our family literacy services. Samantha Parker was just promoted and she will be um, the specialist leading teen adaptive and maker services. And last but certainly not least is our specialist two, Martin Viegas, who leads our outreach services. Those of us in blue have a designated fiscal year 23 general fund budget of approximately $100,000 for personnel costs. Those in orange are funded through a recurring California State Library grant distributed by the California Library Literacy Services Program. For fiscal year 23, just over $40,000 of that of those grant funds directly supports personnel. Programming supplies and equipment costs are supported by $20,000 of grant funding and $22,000 of general fund. We also have a recurring donation of $21,000 from the Friends of the Corona Public Library to support the Summer at Your Library programming, including the Summer Reading Challenge, which, again, it's not too late to sign up this summer. <laughs> uh, all right. So some overviews of the 15 service areas that we provide. We'll start with adult literacy services. Per the state library grant, the focus of adult literacy is to support low literate adults with one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Trained volunteers are matched with English speaking adults to help them build reading, writing, math, and technology skills to help them achieve personal goals that relate to family, employment, and community engagement. We are in a rebuilding period. So as Abby explained, uh, coming out of COVID was very difficult for us. There are currently eight active tutor learner pairs right now. Uh, there are three learners awaiting uh, to be paired, seven active tutors, and 12 tutors and three learners that are on hiatus that we're trying to get back in. To supplement uh, the one-on-one -on -one tutoring, we offer small group sessions that are either volunteer, partner, uh, and contract-led classes, series, or workshops. Currently, we have one partnership series with CNUSD Adult Education serving ESL learners. In fiscal year 21, 27 adult learners participated in the ESL series. Throughout the rebuilding period, we will be adding new classes or workshops related to reading, writing, math, technology, and other information literacies like navigating financial or medical systems. We also offer Career Online High School which is a continuing education program that allows adult learners 19 and up to finish their high school diploma as well as complete a career certificate through an accredited online school. We support a number of scholarship seats with matching um, with the California State Library matching additional seats. We currently have two active students and 10 scholarship seats uh, and we recently had five graduates post-COVID. 
uh, getting into our family literacy programs. Per our grant funding, family literacy programs primarily support adult learners with goals of better supporting their families. Depending on the time of year and our staffing capacity, we offer little one story time for caregivers of ages zero to 24 months, toddler story time for caregivers of ages 18 to 36 months, and preschool story time for ages three to five. These story times are designed to introduce caregivers and their children to the five early literacy practices of talking, singing, reading, playing, and writing. Not counting this month's attendance, we have had 3,151 participants at our story times this fiscal year. Moving on, our first original family literacy program designed by specialist April Raya is called Reading Strategies. It is a 10-week series of workshops where children ages five to seven and their caregivers are separately introduced to a reading strategy, and then they come together to practice that strategy using activities and games that they, they can then take home to practice together. Our pilot series occurred in fiscal year 20 and has been on hiatus since, and we will be bringing that back this uh, fiscal year's spring coming up. In fiscal year 22, the Family Literacy Team received a mini grant for the state's Early Learning with Families initiative to create a Stay and Play program. Stay and Play focuses on non-parent or guardian caretakers, otherwise known as friends, family, and neighbors. Our program is called Play Cafe at the Corona Public Library and is a six-week um, morning series that offers snacks, community resources, and activities for caretakers of ages zero to five. During the two sessions of the mini grant this fiscal year, we had 170 attendees. Our next series will be occurring this coming fall. Family literacy programs continued. Um, story walk. In fiscal year 21, uh, former specialist Madeline Black and librarian to Jennifer Bowserman, in collaboration with the Parks Division, established Corona's first story walk. It is located at Mountain Gate Park. A story walk is a series of panels along the parkway that includes a page from a book along with activity and comprehension prompts. Staff change out the book monthly. Each book is in English and in Spanish and includes audio options for both languages. Uh, and that audio option is actually being updated and will be um, implemented actually tomorrow, I believe. So we upgraded instead of using YouTube videos, we will have a call in for uh, the audio option. This summer, we have partnered with the park rangers to bring back guided story walks, which were a hit last summer. Uh, so they will be doing that once a month. The 1000 Books program, in support of uh, this free national initiative that highlights the importance of print and book awareness to early learning, the library offers logging and an incentive for every 50 books a child reads or has read to them. Coming in fiscal year 23, staff have created a keepsake logging journal and activity book that we will have professionally printed. In fiscal year 22, we had 146 signups. And lastly for family literacy is our homework center program. During the CNUSD traditional school year, teen and adult volunteers provide after school homework help to small groups of students in kindergarten through sixth grade. This is a free drop-in program with annual registration. Parents have access to a quiet room with learning resources for younger siblings to engage with while they wait for their students. This fiscal year, we serve 701 students and volunteers. All right. uh, for an overview of our adaptive teen and maker services, Similar to adult literacy, adaptive teen and maker are in a rebuilding period as well um, with the new staff of Samantha Parker. The Corona Adaptive program is designed to create a friendly environment that promotes mobility and exercise, uh, promotes new skills, encourages play, and encourages a sense of belonging to those uh, 14 and up with developmental disabilities. A recreational program called Out of Bounds is our mainstay. We physically started um, back in person uh, in January after a COVID hiatus. 
and have had 481 participants, not counting this month. Just last week, they had 108 uh, last wow. Thursday, and that occurs at the Circle City Center. We also have uh, art classes for ages 14 and up, as well as art classes for K through six, uh, through a partnership with the Corona Art Association. We served 811 art participants uh, this fiscal year. In fiscal year 23, we hope to bring back either our uh, story hour or book club for our adaptive groups. Uh, the Teen Advisory Council, which you know very well, uh, is a voluntary group of 7th through 12th graders who are committed to helping the library and recreation divisions stay relevant for teens by developing community events. They are currently 15 active volunteers, and just last night we had four interested in joining, so we'll hopefully be uh, refilling those seniors that just graduated. Uh, in fiscal year 22, they presented four events and attended department signature events, and they interacted with 2,151 community members. The Maker Exchange is both a two-room makerspace facility and a multifaceted service with varying in-person and online program elements that promote creativity, tinkering, skill building, and making. The facility is equipped with computers, smart devices, 3D printers, digital die cutters, recording equipment, and art supplies. Currently, we offer open hours to teens and adults on Tuesdays from 3 to 7 p.m. However, staff will be revisioning maker programs this fall to diversify audiences and consider new times and days for offerings. And last but not least, the overview of outreach and veteran services and programs. The On The Go program brings story times, recreational activities, and crafts to different Corona neighborhood parks each month. Additionally, families can sign up for library cards, check out library materials, and access information about other community services, programs, and events. Not counting this month, we've served 1,249 community members at parks this year. Veterans Connect at the Library, which originally started in fiscal year 2019 through a state library grant, um, partners with the CalVet um, partners with CalVet uh, and California Libraries as they work to connect veterans and their families to local resources. The Corona Public Library Veterans Resource Center is run by a group of skilled volunteers that help veterans with finding employment, accessing health benefits, buying a home, and accessing resources for other needs. Our nine volunteers returned to in-person services this fiscal year and have contributed over 412 volunteer hours to open office hours and community events, directly working with 35 veterans to work through their benefits. Additionally, outreach staff schedule recurring visits with local organizations, businesses, and departmental programs, as well as participate in special events to bring a variety of resources and activities to different demographics. Staff regularly visit the Senior Center, Recreations Kids Camp, iPlayology, and Bedford Canyon Homes. Of the 51 events we participated in this year, we interacted with 3,797 community members. That concludes the 15 main service and programming areas, <laughs> uh, but there's a little bit more. Uh, additional LCE services, programs, and partnerships uh, that happen annually or on an ongoing basis include our Summer at Your Library, the in and out Cover to Cover Club, Star Wars Reads, National Library Week. There are thrice weekly math tutoring for high school and college students during the school year, a monthly adult fiction book club, a bi-monthly Read to a Dog program, and all learning stations um, which provide uh, early early learning games for kiddos in the children's room as well as in the waiting room for homework center. LCE also contributes to um, most of the library displays in the library that is under our purview. Um, we are also in charge of library tours and we are the social media content creators. So if you've seen any of our uh, reels or stories on Instagram, that is also our awesome LCE staff. Um, we have also been managing the upstairs gallery 
but as you know, this service will be ending soon due to the Heritage Room expansion that will take over that space. Please make sure you make your way up. Uh, July 15th is when we will have the trains back upstairs. So if you ever, if you didn't get to see the trains a few years ago, it's a great thing to see. I think this is my last one, yes. <laughs> Additional LCE contributions. We do quite a bit of community outreach. Um, we engage with the community in a variety of ways. Annually, we uh, organize the Head Start holiday event to support TK students from our local Riverside County Office of Education Head Start programs. Also annually, we host a school librarian's luncheon for CNUSD library staff to get together for their own collaboration, as well as to hear about our current services and programs offered. Throughout the year, we go to our department signature events, as well as special events like park openings. And some of our Vets Connect volunteers attend local events and meetups throughout the year. And I think I hit everything. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. So I did want to let you know the focus for fiscal year 23 LCEs um, dedicated to rebuilding our adult literacy services this coming year. That has kind of six points that we want to make sure are at least started coming up. Uh, first, to develop a comprehensive onboarding and training program for literacy staff. Uh, second, commit literacy staff time to ongoing professional development and regional collaboration. Third, develop a comprehensive tutor training program with ongoing support opportunities and learning opportunities. Fourth, design a workflow for quarterly statistical reporting through stronger utilization of database software called LACES. Fifth, through a blend of partnership, contract, and staff develop sessions, bring back and diversify small group offerings. And finally, commit to individualized communication strategies to better understand the needs of learners and tutors. Oh, sorry, there that is. <laughs> it's all there. And that concludes my overview of literacy and community engagement. Uh, for questions, thoughts, concerns, or ideas, please contact me. Uh, and as most of you know, I will be on maternity leave. So for any further questions while I'm gone, you can direct them to Abby. Thank you so much. Thank you, Miss Danny. <laughs> I am so happy that you guys are presenting this to the public because I had no idea that it was more than just a place where you go check out books or go buy books at the friend's exactly. store. So this is amazing. I think the public benefits from it, and thank you so much. Trustees, any questions? We do have a question, and, and I think uh, you also hit upon it on the, the end with the, uh, the upcoming changes. Um, but going back to the overview for family literacy programs, Danny, um, with the trained, I'm for the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Uh -huh. um, the trained volunteers. I don't know what does the training entail, or what will it entail if those are going to be uh, the changes, and those are offered to the public, vol whoever volunteers to to uh, be an assistant for the program? Sure, so to my surprise, there was a very lacking um, training program prior to uh, me kind of taking over in the interim these last uh, few months. Um, so training right now is really just kind of an intro. Here are some resources that we have online. Here are some, um, we have books and computer, computer stations available and um, good luck. <laughs> That's what it's kind of been. And so we are looking to some of our colleagues in the inland region to see what they're doing. Um, we are part of the Inland Literacy Services uh, Network, or I'm sorry, Inland Literacy Network uh, is the group that we're part of. And 
Um, it's been kind of difficult with the staffing situation to make every meeting. So that's one of the things we're talking about to get um, more information on what other library systems are doing. Um, there's also uh, Pro Literacy, which is a national organization that does help support. So we will be purchasing some kind of pre-made resources that can help um, with the training. So prior to 2018, we did uh, used to hire people to help us, professionals in literacy services. Um, so working on basic phonics, working on basic grammar, um, those kind of things um, is what we hope to bring back. Uh, but part of Shandara's new responsibilities is to research more um, and to talk to current tutors. What is it that they are lacking so that we know how to better train in the future? Great. I think once you have something set, you know, with an actual syllabus or whatnot, yes. you'll bring more volunteers in because otherwise it's kind of a, can be scary to people who would like to help, but Absolutely. are just saying, there's your student, go get them. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. You're welcome. Yeah, foundational building is where we're at. Perfect. Get, starting from the ground up again. Um, I was wondering about all the family literacy programs with the reading strategies um, program. What is the max capacity to um, for that program? Ooh, I don't remember what her capacity was back in, because it started 2019, fall of 2019. Um, because it was a newer program, we didn't have a capacity issue. Okay. Um, but I would say if it's a one-to-one -one situation with that age group, we would probably stick to at most 10. Okay. Um, uh, now, that w what we learned from that first go where we were trying to rely on volunteers for the second room, uh, if the volunteer called out, it didn't really work. So we are going to be dedicating two staff to run that program um, so that we ensure that both the parents and the children have, um, have those staff. Uh, so about 10, because they're five to seven, and, so, and we're trying to really teach certain curriculums. And um, since they're five to seven, I'm assuming it's in the afternoon after school lets out? Yes, uh, it was in the evenings. Okay. And I was wondering with that and the thousand books before kindergarten, I know the state is moving towards like universal pre-K in a few years. Um, have you partnered with like the parent center to let parents know that these resources have, um, like CNUSD's parent center to let them know that the resources are available? It has honestly been a while. We will be in, in contact and then out of contact with Cassandra. Um, I don't even know if Cassandra is still there right now. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yes, yeah, so it has been a while, and it definitely another one of those challenges that we have had with short staff is getting that outreach to specific uh, school sites and to the parent center, even though we, we are right around the corner. So I think the last time we, we were out there was maybe right before COVID, um, but we haven't reestablished since. Okay. And then I just wanted to say that I am going to steal your term of COVID hiatus. I like it a lot better than pandemic. It sure. sounds like a vacation. Yeah. COVID hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely wasn't one because, and I didn't touch on it, we did a lot of, we um, also have a whole library of uh, weekly story times on YouTube um, that were created during COVID. Uh, we also created an entire year's library of maker exchange tutorials that are also on YouTube. So during the COVID hiatus of in-person programming, we were doing things virtually. We had live story time here every Friday. Um, and we had, and thanks to Caleb and his crew, and uh, we also did a lot of take-home kits, of which uh, I did not mention, so... Are those virtual resources still available? And how, did, oh, yeah. how would the public access them? Like if a teacher wants to use one of the story times in their class or... Absolutely. Those are on our YouTube, which is just uh, slash Corona Library. I just have a question about um, the Play Cafe. Can you kind of help me understand exactly what it is? 
Sure. So uh, in our iterations that we tried this year, uh, it was designated for friends, family, and neighbor caretakers. So uh, they did have to do a pre-registration and waiver. And then they came in, they had access to some morning snacks, coffee and tea for the parents, some veggies and fruit for the little ones, and then there was some open play time. So we, uh, depending on the week, we might have different themes. So there would be a dramatic play area, there would be um, sensory play area, uh, maybe an area of steam. So each, um, I, I'm not sure how many different um, areas that they would have each week, um, but they would offer those, and then there would be a story time very traditional to what we do in our regular story times for toddlers and preschoolers. Uh, and then there would be a craft as well. Uh, during that program, we also created um, literacy kits. So I'm not sure if you're aware of our kit collections that we have at the library, but we added to them. So we have some early literacy kits that provide books in English and in Spanish uh, with uh, different ideas for play, or for comprehension skills that were created for Play Cafe first and then became part of our regular collection. So they just would have different opportunities to do that with us. And then we also highlighted different community resources. So one week we did have the fire, um, fire guys come out and talk about fire. We had a yoga instructor come and do mindfulness with the caretakers and the um, kiddos. Uh, I can't remember every partnership we added to that. Um, that was April Raya's team. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm thoroughly impressed. It's like you left no stones unturned. It's Thank you. Like, uh, I mean, you cover every age level. We from try. From zero to five. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really awesome, and that's an awesome way for them to develop language. You know, it's by reading or hearing books read to them and playing. That also helps with their socialization skills, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so like our chairperson here said, it's just amazing that the library does more than let us check out books <laughs> and use a computer. So Thank you. I'm, I'm very impressed with this. The LCE team works very hard every day, and they're very dedicated to these services and programs. Um, and of course, we always wish we could do more, more, more. So uh, having a, a full team as of yesterday is thrilling to us, very hopeful to uh, rebuilding and diversifying what we already offer. Very well done. Any other questions? Thank you again. Thank you. And um, if anybody is a member of a book club, those book club kits that the library provides are amazing, and they've been updated. They must have 30 different sets of mostly um, current fiction that they have. So, Ms. Backus, are there any written comments from the public? No written comments from the public. And are there any speaker cards for public comment? No speaker cards. Thank you. We're moving on to item number six, which is September Library Board of Trustees meeting. Members of the Library Board of Trustees, I wanted to let you know that we are recommending that you vote tonight to be dark in the month of September. You ask, what is dark? Well, every year we try to offer you one month in which you do not have a trustee meeting. And the reason that we are suggesting September is that both Abby, myself, and Ms. Backus will all be out of town in September, so it's super exciting that that's a great time to be dark. But worry not, I know that for many of you, 12 meetings a year is really important, and you will have 12 meetings a year because we'll have two meetings in August. So we'll have our standard meeting in August, which is our meeting on the dais, and then we will have our retreat meeting. Um, and so you'll have two meetings in August and no meeting in September. But we do need for you to vote on that, um, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you might have about that suggestion, but we do need a vote from the trustees on that item. Thank you, Dr. Turner. Um, can I, is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to go dark this September. I second. The motion was made by Trustee Merchant and seconded by Trustee Tannerly. 
Um, could we take a vote, please? Ms. Chair Pat. Shirley Teller Hayes. Approve. Vice Chair Connie Newham. Approve. Trustee Meg Yamato. Approve. Trustee Kennerly. Approved. And Trustee Jimmy Merchant. Approved. The motion passes unanimously. And uh, one more item for you is our future agenda items. So this is an opportunity that we want to offer the trustees at every meeting um, to talk about future agenda items. A couple of things, um, obviously, we as staff want to make sure that you have presentations about what's happening at the library. And as we do policy changes and those things, we will make sure that those get on your uh, agenda, but the opportunity to um, bring items and ask staff to prepare reports is always open to you. We particularly want to put out um, for public discussion tonight some things that you'd like to address uh, at your August retreat. So one of the things we worked on last year um, was your work plan and the items that you wanted to accomplish and kind of measuring against those metrics. So some of the things you talked about um, was lowering, um, lowering barriers and increasing access. And I want to give you kudos tonight um, for your statement on intellectual freedom. I think there is no stronger statement about um, lowering barriers and increasing access than this statement of intellectual freedom. So kudos to you trustees for, for that. Um, but if there are other items that you would like to focus on during our sort of half-day retreat as we look at how you want to uh, move in this next fiscal year, we are open as staff to hearing that tonight. If this is putting you on the spot, which often it is, um, please don't hesitate. You can always, if there's something that's popping out tonight, we can surely write it down. Um, but if not, please feel free to email either Abby or myself, and we will make sure that that gets on your August agenda, and we will get your August agenda out to you, so there's plenty of time to prepare for the retreat. That's a facilitated retreat. That's really your time to design how you want to move forward and the, the items that you want to make sure that staff is bringing to your attention, whether those are some metrics that you want to see regularly you know, provided to you or um, if you would like to see different kinds of presentations provided to you, any particular component. As you see, um, when we talked about um, our literacy, our adult literacy and outreach folks, they're doing a lot a lot there, you know, 15 items. Um, uh, when uh, Chris Smith was here in circulation, they're doing a ton. So these are meant to be sort of broad overviews. If any point you want to drill down on any one of these items, that in and of itself can be a full presentation. <laughs> so this was just a really light sort of surfacing on all of these. So we encourage you to think about these presentations that you've had. Uh, if you want to come back to us and talk about in August, kind of setting up presentations for the next year of things that you really kind of want to drill down on and know more about, that could be definitely part of the agenda. But I will leave you with that. I could talk for the rest of the evening, so I will close my mouth and just put it out there and say, if you have any more items that you would like us um, to either put on a regular trustee agenda or that you would particularly like us to address at our August retreat, we are more than open to hearing that from you and, uh, and would appreciate that direction. Thank you. So excuse me, uh, Dr. Turner? Yes. Does that mean you all will be at the retreat as well? Yes. We're, okay. We facilitate the retreat for you all. We make sure you have snacks because that's a key job. <laughs> um, we make sure you have snacks and water and coffee. Um, and then we, we will take you through some work plan work. So we will, we, last year, um, it, was a different, it was a different board, but uh, we did go through some work plan items, things that the trustees wanted to accomplish that year. And staff wanted to make sure that the trustee meetings actually were in line. Uh, and so we tested items that we brought before you to make sure they were in line with your work plan. Um, and so we'll look at what you set out to do in this last year and kind of what you accomplished and what's ongoing. And then any items that you would like to set out for this upcoming year to make sure that we are on track in providing you the support that you're asking for. Okay. Thank you. Um, what was the program that we just 
um, purchased again to know what the needs of the community was? Collection HQ. Yeah. So Collection HQ just came through on the budget. And then we also are really excited about the fact that we got about $25,000 this one-time one funding this year um, to be able to purchase some extra books uh, once that data comes through and then hopefully help us develop our ask for next budget season about how much we think we would need to really be able to have a print collection that is robust, inclusive, uh, and inclusive and, and speaks to all, all members of the community. Well, one thing that I would like to have at one of our meetings is you said like when the data comes through, I would love to know that, like love to see the data that the Collection HQ gives us in some sort of however it gives you the We report. will be more than excited to share that with you. <laughs> and then like in regards to the full day retreat um, planning day, I would like to spend some time talking about specialized program programming for diverse audiences, like drilling down more in, into that notion. Absolutely. Any other questions? Yes, what's the date of that again? It's August. I will have to I'm ask sorry. Abby, who's much faster with her phone okay. than I am, to give us a date. I know I it's in August. Know I, got yeah. a lot of, yeah. I know I've got a lot of retreats happening in August, and it's half day. I thank you that you would give me a full day. It's the 13th. It's a half day. It's Saturday the 13th, and it's a half day. Oh. Oh, so we'll have to have cake for Connie. <laughs> Thanks Snake. for the hint, Connie. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a half day. Oh, my gosh. It will just be nothing but a party, at least when we start. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's nothing. It's so celebratory. This is really exciting. Right, the baby. Oh, all right. And then the baby will come. It will just be a thrill. So uh, it, is, it, is nine, it, is, it is nine to about noon. Okay. Sometimes we hang around till about 1230. But, uh, but really, no need to spend the whole day. We're, we're okay. going to try to have you have some snacks and some social time and then kind of get right into the work. And then I usually think that anything that lasts more than three hours loses my attention span. So we're going to try to kind of okay. dig into it. And, and really, this is, serves as some nice outline and direction for staff. And we can kind of flesh it out after, but, but really need your opinion on, on kind of how that moves forward. OK. Thank, Thank you. you. I know the last time we um, did the work plan, and I still have it, will we be doing another work plan and then assembling teams to work on the initiatives or the suggestions that we make? That is, that is the goal. Okay. And the goal is to look at what, we, what you said in the last work plan, what we were able to actually address. I have to say, um, it has been an on-fire year for community services. So some of those we were really intentional about and were able to get to, and some of the other ones, they were part of our philosophy, but they didn't really actualize in um, executable tasks. Um, and so what we're hoping for this year is to spend a little time on the philosophy, spend a lot more time on kind of those really executable tasks and getting you into teams, into working teams, um, supported by staff um, it, for things that you actually want to make sure that you get accomplished this year. Thank you. So we don't have to vote on a motion for that you because do. we're already. That is all for your information. Thank you. So now we're moving on to the consent calendar. Item number eight. And um, I think I'll make a sure. motion to approve the consent calendar. I will second it. A motion was made by Trustee Merchant and second by Trustee Newhan to approve. Uh, could we take a vote? Chair Shirley Teller Hayes. Approve. Vice Chair Connie Newhan. Approve. Trustee Maggie Amato. Approve. Trustee Kennerly. Approve. Trustee Merchant. Approved. And the motion approves unanimously. Trustee Communications. Trustee Merchant, do you have any comments? No, I don't. Thank you, everyone, though, that came in the talk. I really appreciate your time. Trustee Kennerly? Uh, 
I'm excited about the summer reading program because I did sign up. I'm one of those people. Yay! <laughs> and um, so I just, I like all the different uh, features of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm excited to delve into that. Trustee Amato? Nothing to report, just ditto what Trustee Merchant said about thank you for coming and your presentations. So thank you, and we hope to see you next meeting. Thank you very much for coming and giving us your wonderful presentation and for all the work that you do at the library. And if there are no further comments, we will adjourn the meeting.